from my home to yours. Welcome to EMS at Sea Level. Today I'm with Audrey McGuckin from Audrey McGuckin Leadership Solutions. Audrey, thanks so much for joining us. Pleasure to chat again. We talked recently on the Eric Miskell show and I wanted to kind of dive in and get a little bit more detail from you. But first of all, for our viewers, can you give me a quick introduction to your own background and to your organization? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I always tell my, my, my story in terms of where I came from. And um, uh, as a 16 year old leaving school with, with no business degree, I found myself working in a, in a blue collar factory. And fast forward a couple of years, I was um, hired by the CFO at Jabel at the time, Forbes Alexander. And um, mm -hmm job was really to make the coffee and file the letters and I made pretty damn good coffee and and um, then fast forward another six years later um, Jabel sponsored me through a business degree and my master's and then um, I moved to the US from Scotland and did a lot of work there around um, really HR operations and mm. then into talent and then I spent um, the latter part of my career at Jabel in Asia mostly working in um, in China but based in, in Singapore and so I, I have twin 17 year old girls um, and I raised them to be very independent young women and the problem mm -hmm. is they're very independent young women and so watch what you ask for so that's just mm -hmm. a little bit personal um, background and then really when I came back from Asia I gifted myself for my 50th birthday a startup and so um, at the firm we've been in business um, almost four years and, and what we what we really do is we orchestrate what we call aha moments that fuels leadership transformation and really what that means, Phil, at a more practical level is that um, we design and execute talent and leadership solutions at scale. And that can be across varied complexity, varied size and varied footprint. Um, but the big headline is that, that it's highly customized. Mm. And we find that, that firms can go faster with us um, because we're really agile, we're nimble, we roll up our sleeves. Um, and we deliver quality insights at a better mm. price point than the bigger consultancies. Yeah, and do you, is one of your key benefits that the fact that you understand the manufacturing industry, or or do you find yourself drawn into other industries as well? Because, you know, I find from a from a marketing and a content point of view, half of it is understanding the marketing and content but the other half is the ems industry is a strange complicated industry and the fact that you've been in it so long and you know it so well gives you a whole armory of additional tools yeah you know i've done this work for, for um almost three decades and i would say that um being in the ems industry um it really develops an, a number of skills it, it, mm really helps you focus to be very practical in the first instance, um, because we know in the EMS industry, it's, it's got to be really practical. Um, the other piece is around being very data oriented, um, a lot of engineering and product and process yeah. focus. And so, so that piece as well. And then the skinny profit margins um, mm. really drives the solution. Be lean. Yeah. Right, you know, you, yeah. you be pretty lean. Um, but the other beauty of the, the EMS industry is that, that, that I got to work with different industries like healthcare, yeah. packaging, yeah. And, and so that allows you to, to move into to different spaces. But certainly yeah. where my heart has been is, is in the EMS space. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a, you know, it's a fascinating, amazing industry. And, and those, those three decades you've mentioned, we've seen it change astronomically. So let's start at the end rather than at the beginning. Um, the impact of good leadership and what good leadership and talent management means to, um, means to a business in terms of you know, bottom line, stock price, yeah. all, that, all that stuff that people are measured by. Yeah, and um, you know, I often talk to, to CEOs and, and our clients about why it matters. And there's, there's two schools of thought. 
um, and, and it's not one or the other, but it, it's both, right? Um, you, you have to truly believe in your heart of hearts that leadership mm. matters. I think that's the starting point. And I can smell a rat really quickly when somebody says they care, but they don't. And, mm. and your employees can, can tell as well. Um, but why it matters, I like to go back to who does it matter to first? Um, and there are a couple of constituents that it matters to. It matters to investors. So when I talk to investors, um, you know, what they'll say is that we, we really, um, we measure performance on, of course, financials. Mm. Absolutely, the, the quality of execution, but the quality of leadership matters as well. And so that there's, you know, there's a dollar value and there's a number put on it from an investor perspective. Um, board of directors care. Um, you know, they, they, they're putting themselves on the line by being on boards and they care about the risk involved of not having great leadership. And then customers care. When I talk to OEMs, what they'll say to me is, um, we will award 300% more business to EMS providers that have mm. strong sales account business management. Another OEM said, we have fired an EMS provider because they couldn't execute and they had a terrible um, general manager in their factory. And so it um, matters to yeah. OEMs and, and it's not the soft stuff. Um, yeah. If you think about the, the EMS business and, and how we win business and how you keep business, it's often on the strength of the relationship with the OEM. Mm. Certainly there's execution, certainly there's price, certainly there's technology and, and products, but that strength of relationship can't be really, um, you, you, you can't- um, No, under you can't underestimate it. No, when you talk about, you know, when you talk about the, uh, the customer, you talk about the investor, it's a pretty solid, compelling, it's a pretty solid and compelling argument, isn't it? Do you put specific KPIs when you look at a, uh, a a leadership strategy do you kind of measure and score and then give those those measurements and uh, and scorecards to to companies to to be able to see how how you're making changes and how successful the strategy is yeah and that's a great question phil and, and often what we'll do is it really depends on what direction the the organization's going in mm. one ems provider that we worked with um one of, their, one, of, one of the things that they wanted to achieve with this work in leadership and talent was, we want to have a more diverse leadership team because we believe it drives innovation and we believe it drives productivity. And so mm. one measurement we put in place was they had 0% diversity at the start of the journey um, as it relates to um, diversity of thought and diversity of thinking. Mm. And, and three years later, that metrics change to 46% of their leadership wow. team is diverse. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's one example. Um, I think another example of how you measure the quality of leadership is through um, 360 processes. So yeah. um, you, you get feedback on leadership. So that's another way you can really um, measure it. Um, NPS scores. Um, you know, customer scores are used yeah. to measure. So we'll, we'll take a read at the beginning of um, the engagement and we'll ask the OEMs and then we'll take a read at, you know, the, the end of the engagement or, or at some point mm. in the journey and we'll, we'll get a before and after there. Um, what I will tell you is that there's much research being done and um, Deloitte actually did a, a significant study and organizations with high leadership maturity hmm. report 37% more revenue by employee. Just yeah. half that and it's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And another, another, measure, <laughs> another measure is that they're five times more likely to anticipate and respond to change. Yeah. And, and so there, there's some real hard, solid measures that you can put around yeah. this leadership topic. 
Yeah, and I imagine that company that you um, that you called out that um, went from zero percent to to forty percent plus diversity saw in that same period some substantial changes in terms of the business and business success. So um, I think if you can match those KPIs to to hard business performance, then you've got a pretty compelling story to tell. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, uh, you know, I. I, I one of the things I've learned about the EMS industry is when you put data on the table, it always gets yeah. questioned. So I'm not sitting here saying... You've got to be able to drill down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, you know, the, the, there's this notion of there's other things that impact revenue also. Yeah, um, yeah. Leadership is certainly one of them. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, these are these are operational people. So you, you have to be able to provide solid stats for them to do that. So let's talk a little bit about the, the, the recent pandemic, the recent crisis that's really brought leadership to the fore. And it's part of the reason that it's been the topic of just about, it, you know, one topic within just about every interview I've done recently. How do you think that's changed, um, changed the role of leaders? And where have you seen kind of great examples of, um, you know, with or without naming names, where have you seen great examples of leadership through this really challenging time? Yeah, I think that there's a lot changed, Phil. Um, and one of the things that, that, that COVID has done, and also um, the, the racial injustice and Black Lives Matter, mm. um, because, yeah. you know, the, the, there's this... Um, there's yeah piece as well that that we have to contend yeah. with yeah absolutely um, and and what i've found is that um leaders are struggling mm. and they're they're struggling in enough in a number of different areas um because they haven't been through um a pandemic before and no. we've never had um, black lives matter on top of a pandemic yeah. and yeah. so um what I would say is that a lot of leaders have been fearful. Um, yeah. Leaders I've spoke to, CEOs have said that they've been gripped with fear and not yes. sure how to move forward. Um, mm. And so with that struggle, the ones that have really risen to the top, um, I would say are um, the, the ones that lead with empathy. Yeah. And so what do I mean by that? And um, empathy can be a mystical word. And mm. the CEOs that, that have risen to the top in my mind and, and what I've observed are those CEOs that genuinely try and walk in the shoes of others and yeah. take on that perspective. So yeah. they don't come to it with a sympathy. They don't come to it with just, I care, but it's, it's something more than that. And to be empathetic, takes a level of vulnerability. Yeah. And so what we're seeing with um, leaders is those leaders that can raise their hand and say, I'm struggling, let's yeah. do this as a team. What's everybody's voices are the, are the leaders that are winning. Um, but to be vulnerable, um, it also takes courage. It takes and, a lot of courage. Right? And so um, having grown up in the EMS industry, I can, 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 say for sure that leaders typically are, um, you know, they, they want to do the right thing, um, mm. but they, they also, they don't want to um, show any of their weaknesses, no. right? Absolutely. Um, and let's just call it like it is. It's a very engineering, male dominated yeah. um, environment where that, that's really not been the norm. And so yeah. what we're seeing is those leaders that can step into this empathetic, Role. vulnerable, yeah. authentic space are the ones that's mm. winning. And so that's a, that's a big capability, yeah. I'd say, that, that I've seen, Phil. Um, the other um, capability that's really emerged is um, the ability to be agile and, and yet decisive. And... Uh -huh. Um, you know, the, I, I think in, in the EMS space, we, we have a lot of leaders that, that, that certainly have that decisive nature mm. to them um, because they have to because it's fast paced and, and yeah. um, you know, that they're, they're often at the mercy of their customers. Um, but it's having that agility that's really critical. And then yeah. I would say the third piece 
is um, leaders that can really um, be innovative. So, mm. um, or that, that they can create innovative platforms um, with their teams and they can allow time for creativity and they can allow time for different ideas to emerge. So I would, I would say those are the three buckets yeah. Yeah. That, that I've observed. Yeah, so empathy, agility, creativity, huge. When I look at each of those, you know, starting with the, with the empathy thing, and I think it plays to the agility, those companies that I've seen do well are the companies where you know, the CEO pretty much got the virtual town hall off the ground immediately, started communicating very openly with people and said, hey, you know, we're all in, um, we're all in, in a new space here. It's, it's a challenge to all of us, but, you know, we're going to do this, this and this. We know this is going to happen. Um, so there's that combination of decisive, but, but actually just opening up to a collaborative um, style of management that allows that creativity and that's really important and I guess that kind of brings me to my next question which is you know is leadership something that is is appropriate for specific times so the kind of leaders that took us through the growth since the, the um, global financial crisis of the last decade are they different leaders that are that to the leaders that are most equipped to take us through the crisis and again are the leaders that are going to take us out of the crisis and take us to this next version of uh, the EMS industry are they different again yeah <clears throat> I would say that um, how I like to think about it is it's additive and it's mm -hmm. not an either or so of course we need people that are P&L savvy of mm. course we people that can execute of course we need people that are customer oriented and through this crisis the um, the, the the skills that have really emerged is this empathy mm. and, and agility and innovation and then 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 taking us through that is is really going to be this collaboration um and and the authenticity to be a real leader um mm. You know, you, you talked about some CEOs that, that rose to the top, really sent out a, a communication. They had a town hall. And, and yes, but what we observe, Phil, is the ones that are going above and beyond are having what we call listening sessions. Mm. So they're, they're coming out from behind their desk yeah. and they're coming out from the beautifully curated email that corporate communications has helped them write and they're coming out from behind the edited video or or town hall that mm. goes out and they're actually getting on the shop floor yeah you know metaphorically and yeah. they're they're providing forums where they can hear the voice of their employees and i would say yeah. that that's a big differentiator yeah no that's huge and that you know it, it makes sense what i'm curious about is if you've got a leader or leadership structure because let's face it if you're in an organization with 200,000 people the, the leader is very important but it has to be you know a structure that can support that because that person can't individually um, manage every single person but when you look at that structure and you look at a, a company or a specific leader or a leadership team and you say these guys are awesome on agility and creativity but they lack empathy or these guys really get get the empathy side and they're great at operations and they really understand the numbers, but they're not moving fast enough and they're not they're not creative enough. What tools can you give them? How do you help them transition? Or or is it, you know, are they that's that that's that leadership team, the only way to to change it is actually change the team. Is it is it about training? Is it about thought process? Is it about the build up of the team or is it all the above? 
Uh, it's, um, it's a combination for sure. Um, and I think it starts with the principle of, um, do you believe if uh, our leaders are born or are mm. leaders made? And um, I come from a school of thought that says it's both. Um, yeah. That we're born with some innate leadership capabilities. And mm. yet, um, there, there's work we can do to either fine tune or fast track or whatever it may be. Yeah. Um, you know, I remember a number of years ago, Tim Main, um, who was the CEO at the time, had said, um, you know, Audrey, I used to be able to, to walk the corridors and, and really I used to be able to have conversations with people and touch people and, and really hear their voice. And, and mm. I used to be able to get a sense of um, their style, their approach, their decision making process. But now we're at 200,000 employees and I just can't do that. Yeah. So can you get me a system and a process and a method to, to yeah. how we do that. And so that was really where we developed the McGuckin method, um, which is, you know, it starts off with self-awareness and we have tools. And, and one of the tools we use is a tool called Predictive Index. Um, another tool we use is 360 because mm. people need to have an aha before they will change behavior. If you don't want to change behavior or you don't believe you need to, yeah. Then you won't. And so um, there, there's really this piece around how do you get people to feedback so that they get the aha. And then the yeah. second piece is how do you move the needle and the capabilities? And um, a couple of principles that we work from is um, it has to be real. Um, it has to be quickly applicable in the workplace. Otherwise, you get that forgettability factor. Mm, yeah. um, Often you can learn from your peers. Um, sometimes you need a sponsor or a mentor. And so it's not all about everybody needs to go on a training program, but rather yeah. it's about what needs to be developed and what's the best way. Yeah. Yeah. Does that make sense? No, it's a big, yeah, absolutely. It's a big picture, isn't it? There's a whole bunch of tools. There's methodologists. You know, I kind of see, I, I kind of see you almost as a, as a therapist, in some cases, you've got to break people down and then rebuild them and, um, and, and get, all, get all the pieces together. But I think when we do look at these large um, EMS companies in particular, um, it does have to have a structure to it. It does have to have a method where if you've um, had an impact with the CEO, that has to go through the C-suite, it has to go through the VP and director level right down to, you know, the person managing this, the small team on the shop floor. And that's, that's a big structured approach, isn't it? So, um, it is. yeah. yeah. And we, um, yeah. you know, we have a, a saying, and, and I know that you've heard this before that really, um, that I learned in Asia from my, my great friend TP Ewan, who ran the, the Asia region and for Jabel at the time. And, um, you know, we were, we were at dinner and we were just talking about, you know, how do we, how do we do certain things in that region? Um, and we were both sitting at the dinner table and he said, Audrey, um, the, the fish rots from the head and mm. we have to start at the top of the house. And that yeah. meant top of the house in Asia was him. And so he was really going to step in and he was going to get a 360 and, and yeah. he was going to develop himself. And, and that's really how it works. Um, yeah. Best. And I think the EMS industry is a very um, show me, yeah. prove it. And let me see how that works. Um, yeah. culture. And, you know, I don't want to generalize too much, but, but certainly that's been my experience in, in working across multiple EMS um, organizations and being in the industry for so long that, um, this stuff never works if you start in the middle. <laughs> yeah. if, if, if the CEO says, that's a great idea, we want to focus on leadership, let's start at the middle manager level, not so much. <laughs> no, it's got to be a top-down or a head-down approach, as, as you put it. And I think, you know, there's a, there's a whole group of elements in there. And like you say, they're operational people, so... Uh, if you show them something that works, they will they will adopt it pretty quickly, and they will they will stick with it, and they'll and and they'll see it through. But they've got to fundamentally 
have that desire to change. And then beyond that, there's the whole issue of, you know, how do they recruit talent? How do they build talent? How do they um, increase that as they go through? And we'll save some of those discussions for a, for another day because if we if we get into that we could talk for yeah. um, we could talk for we could talk for several hours but I think at the moment this is such a such a critical topic for people and people really care about it and people are looking to reinvent the industry and reinvent some of the relationships so I see you as being a very a very busy a very busy person so a, a busy startup. Audrey, thanks for your time. Thanks for your candor. It's a pleasure to chat to you again. And I look forward to chatting to you again um, soon, I hope. Yes, thank you, you, Phil. This has been great.